Well, hey, welcome everybody. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, let's just start with this. Uh, I'm so glad that we can continue to gather online. I, uh, I gave an update uh, this past week. By the way, I do those every week. If you wanna go to our homepage and our website, the update that I give every week is, is there. But just with everything going on in the state of Arizona, uh, we thought it wise to push pause on regathering. And so thank you for joining us online. I, I, I love you. I, I said on that update, uh, nobody's more frustrated about it than, than I am but we did feel like it's the wise thing to do. Please continue to pray for me. I'm, I'm praying for you. Today, we're gonna continue our series called Where's the Health? Now, last weekend, uh, Robert did part one of the talk that I'm gonna give today. Last weekend, Robert talked about relational health and he focused on marriage. And if you did not hear that sermon, I wanna encourage you to do yourself a favor and go online and, and, and watch and, and listen to it. But one of the things that Robert mentioned was we're offering an online marriage retreat at the end of the month. Wanna encourage you, if you would, to go online and sign up for that. Um, my wife and I are gonna be part of it. Wanna encourage you to do the same. I was talking to the leaders of, of the retreat, the people that are doing this for us, and I said, give me, give me the selling point. And uh, the guy looked at me and he said, uh, tell all the women there's gonna be great conversation and tell all the guys that they're gonna get to make out with their wives a lot that weekend, okay? So that's the selling point. Uh, all marriages need a, a little help. The largest room in the world is a room for improvement. Please take advantage of, of that and we would love to serve you and help you in your marriage. Now this weekend is Father's Day weekend. And dads, uh, we love you. And I wanna take a moment and uh, just pray for you. In fact, I wanna pray for all the guys in our church. So I wanna encourage you, if you are in the room and there are some men around you, ladies, uh, some boys, would you just get up right now and uh, put your hand on their shoulder. Perhaps you need to walk across the room. Perhaps they're just sitting right next to you. But I'm gonna lead us in a word of prayer. I wanna pray for all of our dads and all the men in our church. And uh, ladies, I wanna invite you to join me. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of fatherhood. For all the dads right now, um, we see it as a blessing. And at the same time, we feel the weight of the responsibility. And so give us, give us wisdom. For all the men and, and boys in, in our church, give us wisdom to love well, uh, to lead well, and, and Father, to represent you well. You are the ultimate dad. And so may we simply learn to receive from you your love, mercy, grace, truth, your leadership, and may we give that away to others. Father, may you work it in us and may we work it out with the people that we love. I pray in this moment that, that you would uh, bless this time. Nobody needs to hear from me, Holy Spirit. Everybody needs to hear from you. And so we pray you'd bless dads today, bless the men in our church, and bless this time as we look into your word. Thank you for the gift of, of fatherhood. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So last weekend, uh, Robert focused on marriage. Today, I wanna focus on parenting as we talk about relational health. And one of the things I did in preparation for this weekend is I sat down with four dads and I just asked them questions. Um, that conversation went so well. And in fact, um, it went for over an hour and 15 minutes. We had to edit it for today. So here's what I wanna ask you to do, whether you're a mom or you're a, a dad, whether you're a parent, uh, even if you're not a parent, there's a lot of wisdom in this conversation. Go ahead and grab a sheet of paper and, and a pen. And I'd like you to watch this interview I did with four dads in our church. Check this out, watch this. So, hey, it is Father's Day weekend. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, there, there are thousands of dads that attend our church uh, who are the best? Who are the best dads that we could get some counsel from? And uh, those guys weren't available, so I got these guys <laughs> instead. There you go. And uh, we just thought we would have a conversation. And uh, just to say it out loud, there are no perfect, there are no perfect dads except for one. And that's our uh, our heavenly Father, uh, Matt. You've got a couple of uh, younger kids. Uh, you're across the map. Yeah. 29 to 13, yep. and then you guys have grown children. Yeah. 
Um, so, so let's just kind of kick this thing uh, around. And what's something you would just say, I, I got this one right and, and it, it just worked out really well. Is there something that comes to mind? Both my kids have an amazing, strong love for Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, I don't know if that was me, you know, one thing that I did right, but I think just instilling them, you know, the love for God and love for people. And, and you go through a lot of challenges to get there. You know, a lot of times you're like, oh, I'm not sure this is really going to work out. Maybe we should reevaluate what we're doing. But just to stick through, man, and, and, and continue to pray for them and to see them as, as adults that love Jesus and love people and, um, you know, are investing, you know, in their kids and taking them to church. Um, it's probably the thing I'm most proud of. I would say the thing that I always hoped for, and I think, I think we got this right, both Patty and I, is when you think about unconditional love, mm. I always wanted to know that my children would know absolutely with certainty that they couldn't do enough good to earn any more of my love, mm. and they could never do enough bad to lose any of my love. And that was it. I figured if I could teach them that when they were young, it would be okay when we got old. And there have been so many times and things and situations in our lives where they messed up. We messed up mm -hmm. as parents, but they messed up. And they knew in those moments that they hadn't done near enough bad mm -hmm. to lose the love that Patty and I had for them. Our family is divided. We, we go before Christ and then after Christ. We had first two before Christ. So I came to Christ later in my life. And so I was nowhere near him when we had the first two. Uh, our kids really didn't go to church. We didn't go to church. Um, fortunately for the next three, we did. But what I, the one thing, and I'm still trying to do well is, I don't force Jesus on my kids uh, because to me that was a big turnoff. What I try to do is live my life and have them know who Jesus is through there because mm. I think that would have made the biggest impact in my life coming up. So that's what I try to do. Matt is one of uh, our newest members on, on staff, but Matt came out of uh, education. Uh, you were actually the principal at my son's school for a mm. little bit when he was in- uh, That's when you were Mr. Moore. Kindergarten and first grade. Yes, yes, I love being Mr. Moore. Let's just go with that. It makes me feel important. So you've literally seen hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of elementary age kids. You've yep. been in education for a long time. Is there something you, you've just seen maybe a dad do or dads collectively through your time mm -hmm. that, man, if we could just all repeat that, yeah. that would be a win? Uh, you, the first thing that came to mind is when I was teaching fifth grade. Um, this dad, whenever he would come in, he'd come into, he'd come to everything and he would say, um, I'm so excited to talk about my favorite topic, oh, that's cool. his son. And it was, that is that's man, cool. I learned so, cool. I, it made such an impression on me, um, just the way we speak and talk about the people that we love. And, um, you know, that's exactly what I want. People to think when I talk about my kids, like that is, that is my favorite topic. We had three kids, we now have 12 grandkids. And it was, it was like super important for Patty that each of our kids support their siblings in whatever it was they did, mm -hmm. games, concerts, you name it. And now we've got 12 grandkids all in the valley. When there's a soccer game, the cousins That's are cool. all there. The cousins That's are cool. all there because of what really Patty and, and then myself drove home with, we're gonna support each other's family. Um, now, okay, let's other side of the coin. So, um, What's something you look back at and you're like, oh man, if I could redo that? If it was something I had to do over and as the other children come on, I, I hope I've gotten better at it, is to not set a bar, say like, you can't cross. This is the standard, you cannot go past that. And I'm glad God doesn't do that to us because every line that he's put in front of me, I've crossed. So um, that, that's something I wish I could have done a little bit better. Now in that, with the mistakes I made, it helped our relationship grow because I had to come back and, you know, have that humility pill and go, dude, I wasn't right. Just to ask, how many of you have, uh, there's been times when you've apologized to your kids? <laughs> like, okay. like today? But keep your hand up for a second. Yeah, like today. I, I want you to see this because this is huge in, in, in what we're talking about. Uh, an apology, uh, I'm not perfect. 
uh, will you forgive me, opens the door for a real relationship. 100%, it's one of the sure. best things you can do. I actually, now that I'm a granddad 12 times, I wish, I wish, I wish I could do it over again as a dad. Because as a granddad, you just love your grandchildren. You just love them. But as a dad, everything's great or everything's terrible, and you just exaggerate. I did. Go to I, those extremes. I would go to the extremes every time, and I lose sleep yeah. over it, and I would have angst over it and all that. And as a granddad, I just have a different perspective, and yeah. it's a perspective, I just love you, and I want what's best for you, and it's just really cool. And I wish I could have that attitude over again. I think just looking back and like things that I would that I would probably change and do over again is um, you, you really can't take back words that you say, right? Mm -hmm. In the heat of the moment. And we're all gonna say some really stupid things to our kids. Um, and I wish I could take those things back, you know, in, in those times, but, but it's, it's, it's really hard. You can apologize and, and we should do that. We raise our hands and say, we, we've all done that. But I think, you know, some of those wounds, I mean, I, mean I, I think kids are begging and dying for just encouragement that they're not getting from the outside world. And when they come into the family, you know, that's gotta be their, their safe spot. And, and listen more. I mean, just listen, listen, listen to what they're saying and their dreams and their fears and what's going on at school, you know, and deeply listen to that. I think those two things I would do is talk less, listen more. Talk less, <laughs> listen more. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> when I lose it, it's a, almost always a pride issue. You know, I'm, I, I, wanna, I want my kids, my family to be seen in a certain way. I want my son, my daughter to act in a certain way. And sometimes it's kind of because for their good, but a lot of time it's a pride issue yeah. in, my, in myself. One last, one last question. Uh, what's a piece of advice that, so we've talked about, hey, I think I got this right. Hey, oh, I wish I could do that again. But is, is there some kind of piece of advice in the realm of, of being a good dad? Just, just remember this truth. The greatest moment as a parent is not the state championship basketball game or the great concert or any of the achievements that my kids have had. And there's been plenty of that and it's been fun and great. The greatest parenting moments by far are the moments when your kid messes up, maybe really messes up, and you are there as a parent to love and to encourage and to wrap your arms around them and say, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. And then you get through it with them and, and the relationship grows and is strengthened. And you look back and you say, that was the best parenting moment I've ever had. And I would say it's not just about your, your kids just screwing up and hanging with them, it's about you screwing up, right? And going back and saying, ah, oh, screwed up a little bit, but being, being willing to admit that. And that it's, it's not about perfection. I said, it's not about perfection, it's about just being present you know, and just, just hanging out and fulfilling that responsibility and let God take care of all the details. I don't want anybody to miss it. He said <laughs> presence over perfection. Yeah. So if you're writing stuff down, that's a one liner you're probably gonna hear from me in the future. It's just so dead on, presence over perfection. Be the parent that you wanna be. You know, I told my wife, I said, you know, I don't, I said, I, I'm gonna do the best I can. I said, but I, I know one thing. I said, by God's grace, you know, I, I said, I wanna be with my kids for their whole life. Yeah. I will not leave my kids. You, you know, no, you know, hell of high water, boom, I'm yeah, here with good. them, you know? I want them in my life, they're mine, awesome. you know? That's good. So. I look back at, at my dad and, and dads in general, my dad especially, um, they're, you th when you think of the memories, you think of the, goofy, funny, uh, willing to, to be embarrassed, not willing, you know, they're not gonna be embarrassed, they're just gonna go do something goofy. Man, what are, we, what are we intentionally doing to be fun in our houses? Well, thank you guys for sharing uh, some of your wisdom with us. And uh, as all of you have said, wisdom comes from mistakes and, uh, and learning from them. And uh, we're kind of all in process, but uh, happy Father's Day. Father's Day. To yeah. each of you. Mm -hmm. Likewise, it's happy Father's Day, Father's Day. Yeah. 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 Father's Day. <laughs> and uh, it's Miller time. <laughs> I wanna say thanks again to, uh, to those four dads. And uh, I wanna encourage you, there, there was a ton of wisdom there. And uh, I wanna encourage you just to maybe go back and, and watch that again later. 
and, uh, and just write down as many things as you can think of. Maybe, maybe have a, a conversation as parents or as parents and, and children. But, but dads, thank you, for, uh, thank you for helping me with, with that. As I thought about uh, the scriptures and what to share with you today, uh, a verse of scripture came to mind. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. We're only going to look at one verse. It's the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 11. And in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 11, you have God the Father speaking to God the the Son. Now, this is at the baptism of Jesus, and so you have the Trinity represented here. You have God the Father who speaks. You have the Spirit who descends upon Jesus like a dove. And then, of course, you have Jesus in the water being baptized. But the Father speaks to the Son, and there's three things here in, in what he says that, that every child needs. In fact, when I say child, because all of us you know, are somebody's child, um, it's what every child needs. It's what everyone needs. Look with me here. Mark chapter 11, or Mark chapter 1, verse 11. Uh, God speaks to his son, and here's what he says. And a voice came from heaven, and here's what God the Father tells his son, Jesus. You are my son. Whom I love, with you I am well pleased. This last part, with you I am well pleased. Uh, This was originally written in ancient Greek, and I did a little word study. You can actually translate those words. In fact, if if I was to do it in, in modern language, literally what God the Father is telling God the Son is you are the apple of my eye. I delight in you. And in this one verse, there are three things that every child needs from their parents, that, that everyone needs. And so even if you have adult children, your adult children still need these three things from, from you. And I would encourage you, if you would, to write these down. N- number one, what every child needs. Number one, uh, they need to know that they belong. They need to know that that I I belong. Now, what's fascinating here is God the Father is encouraging God the Son. Let me ask you a question. How do you know if someone needs encouragement? They're breathing, (laughs) right? Everybody needs encouragement. I guess if somebody's not breathing, then you don't have to worry about it, all right? But everybody needs encouragement. What's fascinating here is Jesus needs encouragement. Why? Because he's God made flesh, but he's also a human being. And so his father encourages him. What does God tell the son? He says, you are my son. Now, of course, Jesus knows that he's God's son. So what is God really saying? He's saying, you belong to me. One of the things that I loved in that interview, uh, Jeff was the guy sitting next to me. And he said, "Um, here's what I want my children to know, that I'm going to always be there for them. My whole life, I'm gonna be there for my kids. He said, come hell or high water, no matter what happens, I will be there for them. That's a statement of my kids are mine. They belong to, to me. And I love it when, when Jeff said that. I, I don't know if you caught it, but actually when he said it, I kind of leaned over and I, and I bumped him with my shoulder. Um, obviously, all of us would high five Jeff for that statement. You know, I'm gonna be there for my kids. It's a lifelong uh, c- commitment. But I know Jeff's story. And, and here's what I know about Jeff. His dad, his dad left. And so when Jeff got married and when Jeff started having kids, he said to himself, this is who I'm gonna be for my kids. And, and let me just tell you this, if you're a parent and, and, and you come from a home that wasn't that, that great, look at me here, you can make different decisions. You have the power to change your family tree. And so do that, make some decisions, decide what kind of parent you want to be. I love what Steve was talking about in the video. He said, you know, when the kids were small, we made them go and support their brothers and sisters. 
And and now that he has 12 grandkids, that tradition continues. What does that communicate when this whole family shows up to the sporting event? It communicates, I belong. That's so important. One of the things that uh, Steve does for all of his grandkids, and and I love this, is is he writes a song for each of them. Now, he rips off the music, all right? He, he, He... puts new lyrics uh, to tunes that everybody knows. In fact, I was going to play one of those songs for you this weekend, but it's a very popular song. But Steve's youngest grandchild, his name is Cruz. And I saw this video on social media, and it's all the family singing Cruz's song to Cruz. And all the family is singing, Hey, Cruz. Don't be afraid. I was going to play it for you, but we're a large church and there's licensing things and all that. So here's what I'm going to do if you, if you want to watch it. I'm going to put it on my Instagram account, all right? Uh, at Pastor Chad Moore. But you can see the family singing this song to, to Cruz. What does that say? It says you, you belong. Dads are important. Moms are important. God God wired us in certain ways so that we can give kids what what they need. Dads, let me tell you one of the things that you give. You give stability. You give identity. Dads tell kids who they are. And so tell your kid, you know, you, you belong. The first thing that the father, our heavenly father, tells God, the son, is you are my son. You belong to me. Second thing here that every child needs is they need to know that they are loved. I am am loved. What did the father say to the son in the verse? He says, you are my son whom I, whom I love. Um, I feel the need to state the obvious, and so I'm going to. Tell your kids that you love them whether they're young or a teenager or whether they're grown. Tell your kids that you love them. Say it out loud with your mouth. Uh, Sometimes uh, guys will think, well, they know I love them. You know, say it. It's really, really important. And I would encourage you, say it as often as you possibly can. Tell them that that you love them. Uh, one of the things one of the dads said, and, and he, was our, he was our one-liner dad, his, his name is Dan, and he said, said this, he said, listen more and talk less. I think I reversed it. I think he said, talk less, listen, listen more. Uh, to listen is, is to love. I know a lot of times as a dad, I'm busy, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, my kids are telling me something and I'm thinking about what's next or what I'm going to say and I'm not really listening. Uh, write this down if you're taking notes. To listen is, is to love. To listen is to love. Another thing that, that Dan said in the realm of loving our kids is he said presence over perfection. And, and the dads talked a lot about that, that, that you know, if they could go back and do it again, they would chill out a little bit. Maybe you wanna write that down. Chill out, Uh, presence over perfection. Uh, My son Josh and I had a conversation not too long ago. My oldest son is is a teenager. And uh, he and I were were out and about doing some different things. And I said, Josh, you know, do you want to go to lunch with me? And and he said, yeah, let's let's see if if, if mom can come too. And I was like, okay, that's that's different. And uh, Katrina wasn't available. And and Josh said, dad, let's just go home. You know, I I don't know that I want to go to lunch. And so I looked at him. I said, man, what's up? I said, this this is different, right? Normally you wouldn't ask your mom. It's just you and me. And and now you don't want to go, what's what's going on? And here's here's what he said. And I'm just going to confess this to you because I'm not a perfect dad. Shocker, all right? We're kind of all in in process. But he said, you know, dad, lately um, when, when we talk, he said, it just feels like you're interrogating me. And he said, I get that. I've done some things that are wrong lately. He goes, I I understand why you're you're doing that, but it just feels like an interrogation. And I just had to look at Josh and tell him, I'm I'm sorry. He was was right. And then not too long after that, I I did this interview with with the dads and and Dan said that, you know, presence over, over perfection. Am I really listening? 
Um, there are some things that really, really matter. Um, I, I'm still, you know, the leader. I, I still need to do, uh, you know, moments of discipline with my boys. But am I listening to them? To listen is to love. Presence over, over perfection. Here's how kids spell love. T-I-M-E. It's so important. The, the other thing that I want to mention from, from the interview and just the realm of, of, of loving somebody is, is the importance of humility. You know, I said, how many of you have apologized, you know, to your kids and every dad, you know, lifted, lifted their hand. They were like, today, <laughs> you know. Um, humility is how love is, is exchanged. Uh, humility says, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. I still love you. Will you still love me? The only way to experience real love is to be the real you. When your kid tells you something that they've done and, and, and you want to freak out, I want to encourage you, don't do that. If you freak out in that moment, you just taught your kid to lie to you in the future. Now, if you need to freak out, take a time out, walk away, freak out, and then come back and have the conversation. But humility is how love is exchanged. Pride closes the door on love. Humility allows it, allows it in. Be the leader, still discipline as you need to, but, but be humble, apologize when you need to. This creates an environment of grace. This creates an environment of, of love and humility is how real love is, is exchanged. And so the father tells the son, I belong. I am loved. Jesus knows that in, in, in that moment. You are my son whom I love. Number three, the father, our heavenly father tells God the, the son, in you, I am well pleased. What does that mean? People need to know, our kids need to know that they are, are special. I, I love what Matt said. You know, I, I said, hey, you, you were in education for a long time. Is there something you ever saw a dad do that was just fantastic? And what did he say? He said, there was this one dad when I was teaching fifth grade that was at everything. He said, and I loved it because every time, you know, I would talk to him about his son, he was like, I love, I love to be here talking about my favorite topic. Do our kids know that they are one of our favorite topics? One of the most important things that we can tell our kids is this, I'm proud of you. One of the most important things that you can tell your kid, that I can tell my kids, is I like you. <laughs> You're cool. I love this uh, about you. And we celebrate who they, they are. Do your kids know that they are special to you? Do they know that they are the apple of your, of your eye? So God the Father tells God the Son, you belong, you are loved, and you are special. The Bible teaches that when we give our life to Jesus, we're adopted into the family of God. In fact, Jesus taught that we're to call God what he called God, Abba, Father. The word Abba is an, is an intimate word. The best translation we've got would, would, be, would be Daddy. Last year, about this time, I was going through um, a really difficult season. And you're thinking to yourself, and now it's 2020, Chad. You've had a rough couple of years. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for, for putting that together. But this time last year, I, I was having a really difficult time. And quite frankly, um, I, I was having some doubts in, in my faith. I'm a, I'm a pastor, but I'm not but I'm not perfect. And I remember talking to God, you know, are you still there? Do you still care for me? And one night in the middle of the night, I, I woke up. I shared this a few months back, but one night in the middle of the night, I, I woke up and, and Mark 1:11, the verse that I'm sharing with you today was on my mind. And it was like the Holy Spirit was telling me, turn to Mark 1:11. Turn to Mark 111. Turn to Mark 111. And um, I'm a pastor, but I don't have the entire Bible memorized, okay? So I didn't know what Mark 111 said. So in the middle of the night, I didn't want to turn on the light, but my phone was there. Katrina was still sleeping. I didn't want to wake her up. And so I grabbed my phone and I looked up Mark 111. And here's what I read. And it was like God the Father was speaking to me. You are my son, whom I love, and you 
I am well pleased. On this Father's Day, here's what I want you to know if you've given your life to Jesus. God looks at you and says, you belong. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are part of the family. You belong. God looks at you and says, you belong. He says, I, I love you. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, I love you as you are, not as you should be, because none of us are as we should be. He loves you. You belong. You are loved. And he is well pleased with you. You are the apple of his eye. And if you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, I, I'm a sinner. I, I know he's not. He's not pleased about the sin. God hates sin because sin hurts us. But listen, here's what I'm telling you. God looks at you. Your heavenly father looks at you and says, you belong to me. I love you. And I like you. You're special to me. Think about this for a second. You're not one in a million. You're like one in seven billion. Nobody has fingerprints like you. You are very special to your heavenly father. So happy Father's Day. You belong. You are loved. You are special. I'm telling you, if God has a refrigerator, your picture's on it, all right? Happy Father's Day. I love you guys. Please think about these things. Please think about how we can encourage people with these truth, truths beginning in our own families. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you today that you are the ultimate father. Right now in, in each of our hearts, can, can we just thank our heavenly father, maybe in your own heart and mine, uh, wherever you are, would you just thank him that you belong? Would you just thank him that you are loved? Would you just thank him that he made you special? Father, give us wisdom of, of these things. Thanks for these dads that, that helped me with the talk this, this weekend. Um, all of us are in process. Please teach us, we pray. May we operate from the strength of this truth, that we belong, that we're loved, and that we're special. And may we encourage others. Teach us, we pray. Help us to parent well. In Jesus' name, amen.